Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sass Bites, where a weekly bite of sass during your lunch break. Um, I am Micah Godbolt, your host, um, and today we're doing a little bit of a different episode because I'm not going to be around here on Thursday for a typical live episode. So I'm going to pre-record something and get it out to you, uh, hence no lower third and video and those types of things. So uh, anyway, feel free to catch up um, on the past episodes at sassbytes, uh, youtube.com slash sassbytes. Follow us on Twitter at sassbytes, and you can follow me for my personal stuff as well if you want to see all that uh, good sassy stuff. Uh, so today what we're going to do is um, kind of continue on the series of talking about um, different frameworks and um, SaaS plugins and all the different tools that, that SaaS allows us to pull together to create projects that we want to um, uh, want to work with. Um, and as I don't have a guest this week, I want to talk about is one of my favorite um, plugins, um, which is called SaaS Globbing. Uh, and this is something I have I've preached about a long time to anyone that listens because I think it's amazing what SAS globbing does to your workflow uh, and work to your uh, to your file organization. Um, so let's talk about the the um, let's talk about the problem in general. So here is a project I've shown this one a couple times um, with you know a good chunk of files. Lots of files in there. Now, typically, um, to import all these files together, you either have to do some kind of like, you know, have a component partial that pulls everything together and then, then import that component partial somewhere else, or just put everything all into one big long import style sheet in like your screen at SCSS or something like that. Well, that's a lot of overhead. That's a lot of keeping track of you know what's imported and the order. And if you're not going to import something or you want to add something or move something or rename something, there's a lot of overhead in keeping track of all those things. And when you get into large projects that have upwards of oh, 100 partials, uh, it gets really difficult to say, oh, just reorganize, <laughs> put some in new folders or something. So that's what SAS globbing does for us. And let me kind of walk you through how it works and what it does for you, and then get in some of the more interesting um, details about it. So um, just like with any gem, um, gem install and sudo if you need to sudo, sudo gem install SAS globbing. And just as some background, this is actually a gem um, that's produced by Chris Epstein, one of the maintainers of SAS. So um, it's good quality stuff. Um, it's basically, it's not in SAS because if you don't use it right, you can shoot yourself in the foot. So it's kind of an optional thing that he just put as a separate item to, for people to bring in when they want to use it. So we'll do a gem install. And it's a pretty simple gem too. I, I'm trying to think when it was even last updated. Um, but that should install, there we go, thank you. Yeah, version 1.1. 1 .1. All right, so with SAS globbing installed and our config RB, of course, I'm including SAS, requiring SAS globbing right there. That's all I have to do, there's no import, it's just all Ruby, so it just imports some additional Ruby functionality that you wouldn't normally have. <clears throat> so with that, uh, with SAS globbing in there, when you compile, uh, watch, sorry. You do a compass watch. All right, we're watching, watching, watching. Um, what happens is instead of having to explicitly import every single file in this list, we can go down our screen.scss and you can see a much smaller, much simpler set of imports. Uh, I am importing compass and Suzy just like I normally would because those actually brings partials, uh, bring mixins and functions over. Um, but then you can see here, I'm actually able to just import in a couple individual folders. I've got global mixins, global functions, variables, extends, and then I do my base components and layouts. Now I can do this because of SAS globbing. Uh, SAS globbing allows me to say import global mixins and anything inside of this mixins folder, uh, let's see, uh, global mixins right here. So it just import anything inside this folder. Uh, including other folders. So star star slash star means everything inside of it recursively. Any, anything inside, anything inside that folder, inside that folder, so all the way down. If you just had a single star like that, it would import everything in that folder, but not the folders inside the folder. Typically, um, once I go one level deep, I just import everything, uh, but you can certainly change it uh, if you like to. Uh, so the same thing, I can import all my functions, uh, which is just a, a single file, uh, variables, and then extends here, uh, all my base files, all my component files, all my layout files. So that's one of the powers of SAS globbing. It allows you to do that. 
Um, now you notice I don't just import my entire SAS folder because there is some order here that you have to be careful of. You can't just dump it all in and expect things to work. Uh, and I was actually playing around with this a little bit earlier today to see what does work and what breaks. Like for instance, uh, mixins and functions, it doesn't matter. I can change the order of that. And you can see on the left, it compiled just fine. Even though some of my mixins use functions. So I've got mixins in here, they're actually calling functions um, and, and it doesn't matter though. I can put the mixins before or after the functions um, because SAS loads all of those up and then once it actually needs to actually call those mixins, which is gonna be down here at area, all that stuff's already in memory. So the order of these two matters zero. Now you do wanna make sure that these, uh, especially like functions are done before variables. Because if you look at my variables file, you see that I've got, I'm using a uh, pixels to m uh, function. Um, if I didn't have my functions already loaded, then this this um, this column width would actually equal PEM uh, parenthesis 82 parenthesis, which obviously isn't what I want. I want it to be a value. So um, we want to make sure that your, um, your functions are loaded before variables. And then as well, extends. Um, your extends, even if they're silent, they are gonna print wherever you import those extends. So you need to make sure that all the variables are set before uh, you, you do those extends, because those extends are definitely going to be using those variables. So mixins and functions, doesn't matter the order. Um, you can call mixins, can call functions, functions can call mixins. Mixins can even call each other, even if they're called after the mixin. So if I have mixin A and then mixin B after it, mixin B can actually call mixin A. There doesn't that the order of that does not matter, which is really good because you don't have to worry about this whole um, um, race um, uh, race issue or um, whatever that term is, chicken or the egg issue of, of which one comes first to call the other. So that's really good. Uh, so this is what SAS clubbing allows us to do. Um, so for instance, um, you're like, all right, well that's great. You save yourself a little bit of time, but you know, in the long run, what's it good for? Well, the really nice thing is if I come in here to my main navigation <clears throat> and I realize, that, oh shoot, you know, I've got a header in here and my navigation. This should probably be split up in two different partials. Typically the process is create a new file and then go down the screen and figure out where to put it and then do an at import and do the new, the, the new file and everything. But with this, I can just say header. Oops, let's do this. Header CSS. Paste that code in there, save, save, go over here, and hey, everything worked just fine. I didn't have to add a file. I didn't have to you know, put that import statement into there. If I realize, oh, you know, I should really probably rename this to, I don't know, um, header top, because they have two headers or something. I can rename a file, and it doesn't matter. It didn't break your site, which is what would happen if you rename the file and didn't update it in your main import file. Um, I can also go in here and add a new folder and blah, and I can take uh, my footer and put my footer into blah, blah. All right, now my footer is over in blah. And it's still compiled just fine. The footer statement's in there, nothing broke. I can reorganize, I can move things around, I can rename, add files, delete files. That's another thing. You couldn't, it, without SAS Cloud, I mean, if you delete a file, you have to delete the import statement. So it frees up your organizational, it freezes up that, uh, that OCD in, in your brain so that you can actually organize things the way that makes sense for you um, and a way that's going to be easy to for other people to find. Um, you can you know um, go folders deep without having to worry about um, you know, just the overhead of trying to, to create that same import structure in the screen, uh, like in your main import file. Um, so it allows you to break things up. You know, you get over a couple hundred lines of code. Hey, how can I break this up into something different? Maybe toss in a folder, maybe you don't. So right there, great usefulness. Um, but SAS clubbing actually allows you even a little bit more flexibility than what we see here. Um, in this right here, just with like star, star, slash, star. Um, because for instance, you maybe, uh, it depends on your use case, maybe you wanna be a little more specific about what gets imported and what doesn't. Um, personally, I've never run across it, but you might have a case where you have to. So let's look at some of the funkier things you can do with this. And again, some of these things are actually just, um, 
uh, theoretical if you ever wanted to do something like this. Um, but I'm going to keep my compass watch running on the left side so you can see that no errors are going to pop up when we do this. Um, all right, so I've got this little fictitious um, project and it's got uh, some blog partials and some layout partials and all of them are just tossed in a single folder because um, that's one to show how this works. And here's my uh, my main import screen.scss uh, and you can see when I import it, just import everything with SAS globbing because I'm using SAS globbing. You can see it ran fine and we've got I just put the name of each of the items in here because each one just has one of them. So we've got all five of them coming in. So that's great. So that's just a regular import. It's going to import everything in the partial statement and we're good to go. All right. Um, one thing, another thing you can do is um, instead of uh, saying just import everything, you can be a little bit more specific uh, using some standard regex. Um, if you're not familiar with regex, um, it just it allows you to express a regular expression of uh, of a matching. Uh, I'm not super huge on it, so maybe I'd explain it properly, but it allows you to match things up. So in this case, I want to import everything, all folders, all files that have an extension of one, two, three, four characters that that land between uh, A to Z. Um, oh, actually, this I think this works. Let me do this. Rename this one. Let's go uppercase because it actually does um, differentiate between upper and lower case. So if I was to, let's do this. I'm trying to find a good example for this. Do, do, do. Oh, you know, interesting. Doesn't do SCSS uppercase at all. Okay, that was a bad example. Let's take that off. Um, get back here. All right. Uh, so what this does is it's going to import everything that has an extension of four characters that have letters between A and Z of lowercase. Again, completely fictitious for this project in SAS because that's that's what SAS imports anyway. But as you can see, you can specify number of characters um, and how many or and the range of those characters. So you could actually say A to B. So this first one has to be between A and B, which of course is going to be nothing on the right hand side because it's an S. <laughs> All right, so that one's completely fictitious. Second one's slightly fictitious as well, but you, you can also use question marks to equal those characters. And basically a question mark is going to be uh, any one character, uh, I think really of any type. So it could be letters and numbers and those kind of things. So you can see when I have three of them, nope. The extension has four characters, so we can do that. So you can specify a specific number of characters that are going to fit in that space. Uh, and you can also combine that with these, these other things I'm going to show you here in a little bit as well. So you can use those question marks. Um, what you can also do is use the star in conjunction with text. So say I want everything that, that ends with dash layout SCSS. Well, I can do that. And on the right-hand side, you see I've got blog layout and nav layout. So those things are the only ones that import. Um, I can also, I don't have to have the extension at the end. I can just have um, star dash layout star. So anything that starts with layout and ends with layout. And you can see in this case, layout alternative uh, will pop in there because I'm not restricting that it's layout.scss, just that it has dot uh, dash layout inside of it. So that's quite useful uh, if you want to pick out um, certain ones that have uh, particular naming conventions. Uh, and then you can also do a start, just like you can do um, the start at the beginning. You can also do the start at the end. So anything that's underscored nav something. So in this case, nav dash layout, nav, nav dash layout alternative. Um, so if for some reason you weren't able to import um, um, all of your files by folder, you could do some kind of naming convention and import those then that way. All right, uh, and the last one here, you can use, um, uh, I have to look at the exact names of these again, uh, basically strings. Uh, so either that's either alternative or layout. So anything with alternative or layout and with any extension at the end. So this allows you, it's really similar to this right here where you have dash layout, uh, but I can pass in multiple strings. So multiple possible matches. So whether it's an, uh, the word alternative or the word layout or anything like that. So lots of interesting regular expression stuff right there. Um, and for instance, um, where I found this, oh, here we go. So if you go to the um, ruby-doc.org, uh, I'm looking at the 1.9.3 for SAS globbing. Um, and we can see all of those, um, 
right here. There we go. So we've got our um, our match set. We've got match uh, literals. Uh, you see those the question marks, the dot, dot, and the dot. So it actually follows a lot of this right here. This is what some of the code examples that I got. Uh, you can also use um, a negative on there as well for the um, for your match set. So um, regular expressions, you can go crazy with it to exclude uh, the files that you want uh, or import just the files that you do want. Uh, but if you never get into that, which honestly I have never found a huge need to, just nice to know that they're there. Um, there's still plenty of value in just knowing that you can import entire folders and, and import entire folders and subfolders and all those types of things that allow you to just keep things organized a lot better um, and um, makes projects with large amount of partials a lot easier to work with. So that's SAS globbing. Go check it out. Try it in your project. Uh, go ahead and uh, throw me a ping if you have any questions about it. I've used it in many projects, um, come across various random problems and bin solutions. Actually one, if you are importing an entire folder and you want to make sure something imports first, this is my little trick. It's typically do two underscores as like, this is like my main partial and it's going to have some stuff that's going to be used in some of the ones below it. Um, double underscore is going to come before any letters. So that's typically the route that I use for that. Uh, if you want to make sure something get, gets imported first. So if you do have other questions, feel free, ping me. Uh, be happy to, to try and answer them as, as best as possible, but give it a shot and uh, see how you like SAS clopping. Anyway, we'll see you again uh, live next week uh, for more SAS Bites. Have a good week.